haven't filmed this much in a long time. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Okay, in my last video, we were discussing the attempt assassination on Trump, and then I went over all the lies the media feeds us and how they need to stop because it's getting extremely toxic by the climate we have going on right now. So obviously, we all are seeing all the criticism that is being said about the cops that were there that day and obviously the Secret Service. So I want to kind of go over all the mistakes that the Secret Service made and what we're hearing from the news. Was this all intentional or is it just pure incompetence? There is some house cleaning I have to do really quick. As of when I'm filming this, it hasn't even been a week yet. So details keep coming in. A lot of the stuff I'm going to say is alleged. We don't know if everything we're getting is true. We know how the news works. And of course, I'm going to put a little trigger warning. I'm going to put a friendly reminder to any trolls that want to say this is fake or staged or say you shouldn't have missed or you had one job or anything that has to do with like, like a terroristic comment, you will be blocked from this channel. Blocked and blessed, you little clump of cells. There are a few points I want to discuss that I had to cut out of my last video because it was getting too long, so I kind of want to bring them up now. But I had this whole part, because I love photography, and I had this whole part talking about the photos we got from this moment. I know it was such a horrible time in history, but some of these photos, these photos are gonna live in time forever. And just imagine being that photographer, you hear gunshots and the first thing you're gonna do is run to the stage and try to get your shot, but you can get shot like, that's some cojones. There are a lot of beautiful shots that came from that unfortunate day, but I love the, like when he's ducking on the ground and like, how did you, like there's shots being fired and you're just, you're getting that shot. The one of him on the ground and of course the most iconic with him holding his fist saying fight, fight, fight. Well, Time Magazine was going to put the iconic photo on the cover of their magazine. But then tell me why they decided against it. Because, you know, it's only going to help Trump win the presidency this election. So instead, they used a completely different picture taken by the same man, I believe. And it's a black and white photo after the rally. So all the bleachers are empty. You know, it looks kind of sad. It's black and white. And then it has the flag hanging behind it. And that's in color. They're literally rewriting history as it's happening in time. Like the, we all know that that photo is the iconic photo going around right now. That's the photo that they should use. But they don't, they want to suppress it. They want to suppress this time in history. It reminds me of January 6th. I remember watching January 6th live and they were rewriting history as it was happening. We all saw that they were let into the Capitol. They didn't break in. They didn't storm. They didn't, they were let in. The media is going to lie and sabotage Trump whenever they get a chance. Me and my friend were talking about this. It's kind of like the movie Mean Girls when they have that whole like montage where they're trying to sabotage Regina George and they cut holes in her shirt and they try all this stuff but no matter what they try she it just makes her cooler that's what the media does they try to turn him into an insurrectionist they try to turn him into a rapist they try to turn him into a felon they try to kill him they try to label him with all these things Hitler he still comes out looking like a chat at the end of the day you can't sabotage someone so alpha he's not a little simp beta man here's the little moment where I'm going to contradict myself I want to first say to all the police officers or secret service that was there we thank you like you did put your life on the line for the country for the president and that is extremely brave none of us I mean, we don't know what we would do in that moment. So I do want to give love and shout out to the people we're there trying to protect the people and Donald Trump. But I'm about to talk shit about you guys. But I want to go through two lists. The first list is going to be, maybe this was just a bunch of mistakes. Maybe this is just incompetence. You know, anytime you go to the doctor to get your car fixed, to go to the restaurant, fast food, like something is always fucked up. Just in the modern time, we, we aren't as much as we used to be because of technology in my opinion 
And anywhere you go, there is going to be a fumble. Humans aren't perfect. We have flaws. With that said, after we get done with the first list, the second list is going to be like, wait, this all seems kind of fishy. Maybe it's not incompetence and maybe this is actually intentional. So we'll get into more of the conspiracies that maybe this was more secret service doing than we thought. So we heard that the shooter's parents called the cops because they were worried that their son was missing and most likely probably because he had a lot of their weapons. We do not know if the parents called before the fact of all this happening or after the fact when they like found out on the news. Since the news isn't telling us when the parents did call, I'm kind of leaning more towards that it was before the fact because they probably also knew that their child was probably a little mentally unstable and he has weapons at this point. I just want to put it out there that I ex I feel extremely horrible for the parents. Like, just imagine, like, this happened, like, this is never going to be forgotten in history. And your son is the one that tried to attempt the assassination. Not to mention how horrible you probably feel for Corey's family, his wife, his daughters, his community. Like, all this happened because you two decided to have sex and create this little baby and you probably I mean just by the look of pictures not to be an asshole but it kind of looks like you might have been drinking during your pregnancy maybe you should have sold some of these guns and took your kid to therapy but their brain isn't developed and the parents care too much about their lives to even pay attention to the kids and the kids that's all they want is attention and the parents don't put them in therapy or anything and these kids are just chronically online being trolls what do you think they're going to do when the media is telling them that this one president that is running is going to be hitler even though he was already president before i'm taking off my makeup but i was just thinking the kid was a good shot like i heard i heard that um he wasn't that good in school when it came to like his range and shooting and stuff but if Trump didn't move his head, you know, by the slightest, it was the perfect shot. Scary. Also, I want to mention, if you've noticed in the last few videos, I am not mentioning the shooter's name. You guys have been here for a long time. I had a cat and he was my BFF for 16 years. And when he passed away, I, I went... I went crazy that like my heart has never been the same and unfortunately they share the same name and he doesn't deserve to share the same name as this beautiful creature that I shared my life with so I'm not going to say his name. All right we're getting we're getting into the list. Apparently the shooter was walking around for hours at the rally. Before the rally he had a rage finder and apparently this is all alleged because everything keeps coming coming out but like he was in the rally area like walking like if you see a simp walking around like that's already suspicious at a trump rally <laughs> trump rally usually have alpha men we were already went over this so like if they already saw him and they already said he was suspicious they already should have pulled trump out off the stage or he should never went on the stage because that was before he even went on this stage everyone um wants the i don't know if she's the chief or the director that woman that's in charge of the secret service that used to work for Pepsi Cola before this, everyone wants her to resign. Did you guys see the video of her getting chased down at the RNC over the last week? It, oh my God, it was hilarious. Not to be mean, you shouldn't chase down any woman. But I mean, she kind of deserves it. Not to be an asshole. Let's say, let's say she did a good job. No, she didn't. But let's just say, for such a big moment in history, just for respect, just take the L and resign. Like, j someone has to be at fault. You were in charge. Just like if you're watching, like, I love watching those shows where where it's like competition shows and sometimes someone's a team leader. Well, if your team does bad, then you should go home. At first, I wasn't even going to make this video because when we talk about women in the men workplace or being diverse when it comes to hiring, I usually get really ugly because if you've been here, you know I, I'm not, I'm not, 
a girl's girl. I don't think women can do what men can do. I think we're different. I would love to be a ranch hand, but like I'm like under five foot, 90 pounds. I can't pick up 30 pounds. I can't be out in the sun for too long. I can't be cold for too long. I'm not good at like physical labor. I would be a horrible ranch hand. A man that's like six foot 250 is going to do a lot better than I can ever do. Like if you want me to draw a picture, if you want me to craft something, if you want me to fix, I'm good at fixing stuff or even making stuff or editing a video, editing a photo, but like physical labor or even in the workplace. I'm not, I'm not even that good in the workplace. So we've all seen the videos of Secret Service trying to protect Trump and there's like more women than men and they're shorter than Trump and they don't know what they're doing and it looks like a silly movie. We all seen the meme with, um, McCartney, Melissa McCartney, where she's trying to be a cop. You know, like just those funny movies where women are trying to be cops. It looks like a scene right out of one of those movies. But I'm not saying that it was faked or staged and that's why the women were acting like that. Like one of the women kept missing her holster. It seemed like a practical joke. But I really think they truly didn't know what they were doing. It was truly incompetence, no training. Like the job, you're just standing around most of the time because you're waiting for the president to get assassinated. Guess what? That doesn't happen. Hasn't happened since 81. So there's a lot of down time so I think there's just a lack of training now Elon Musk has came out saying he supports Trump and he's giving him like 45 million each month and it's going to pay for his like security and stuff which is awesome but if it's Biden's secret service it does make sense because if you need that diversity you you need to be woke you need to have half men half women and the woman that was in charge made an excuse why no one was on top of the roof where the shooter was because she said the roof was too slanted and that's a liability. See, this is what happens in the woke culture. You need half women that can't do the job. And like, you, like what are we hiring? Like the simp got on to, like if the simp could get on the slanted roof or like, if you're worried about liability, you shouldn't be in the secret service. That sounds like something I would bitch at at work. I'm like, I haven't had my break yet. You got like, that's like what Karen's bitch about. Like, don't join the secret service. If you're like, that roof, it, it's tilty too much. I think I'm going to sue you guys. So that was one of the woman's excuses why anyone couldn't go on the barely slanted roof is apparently she just hires a bunch of soy boys that are too scared to go on a slanted roof. Also, the perimeter, the perimeter that they were going to check should have been bigger. It should have been bigger. Some would say the biggest... <laughs> Anywho, they should have had a bigger perimeter. They should have checked it um, weeks, days before. They should have asked the owner if they could be on the roof. There's a lot of stuff they could have, should have done. I'm not going to say I knew it was going to happen before it happened, but I did have a feeling. Like, I was watching it live, but then I went to the grocery store when it happened. So when I was watching it live, I had a, I had a funny feeling feeling in my gut but not to say that like I kind of get that feeling a lot every time I watch a rally and that's a lot of reasons why I haven't been to a rally yet but especially I've been on TikTok I've been in these lives and when you when you're having debates with a lib and you prove them wrong the embarrassment and the rage is so strong that they do get so upset and after the debate with Biden their emotions and their embarrassment was so high that when I saw that the rally was happening I just got a sick feeling in my gut because I've been talking to these people I know how upset they are because like like Biden like Biden can't talk Biden like they they have nothing to stand on because Biden did so horrible that of course they're gonna want to pew pew Trump. Okay, now we're gonna get into all the details that kind of seem like this might be all intentional. But I do wanna bring up, in my last video, I went through all the presidents that have been assassinated or attempted assassination. All of our greatest presidents in history, our most popular presidents in history, it doesn't matter if they're Republican or Democrats. We've had great Democrat presidents, we had great Republican presidents, but they were all for the people and they were against the establishment and they were against a big government 
government. They wanted a smaller government. But each time there was some kind of assassination, it always came from the Democratic Party, regardless if it was a Democrat president or a Republican president. It was always a Democrat doing the pew pew. I want to add that Joe Biden always says that Trump is going to take away our democracy and he's ruining our democracy, but he never explains how. But he he has said that it's time to put Trump in a bullseye and he says he's Hitler and says all this stuff to make someone want to pew pew Trump. That's actually taking away democracy. If you don't have two choices anymore, that's the, then there's no democracy. Getting rid of your opponent is taking away democracy. I'm losing my mind, guys. By the time my video is up, Joe Biden probably already dropped out of the race anyway. So whatever. I think everything else is on my phone. So this is going to be all the conspiracy kind of like if this was intentional or not. The first thing I found out, which I thought was so nuts, is when I usually watch a rally, a Trump rally, I usually watch it on right side broadcasting. But like every time we watch, you know, the rally, it's going to be on whatever live stream we usually watch if it's Fox. Well, tell me why this is the first time that CNN streamed a Trump rally live. Like, did you know something we didn't? What, what did you want to catch? What did you want? What, what footage did you want live before everyone else? That's weird. Another thing we keep hearing is that like a cop or a secret service agent or someone went on the roof, saw the shooter, and I don't know if like the shooter pointed at him and then they left and then apparently called it in. I'm not sure. We don't know what time that happened. We don't know if that really happened. Let's get into BlackRock. So BlackRock, as we all know, is the largest company in the world with the most money in the world. Some say the biggest. <laughs> BlackRock owns just about everything in the world. Well, the shooter was in one of BlackRock's videos. That's suspicious. That's weird. I don't know how true this is, but I heard that the building that the shooter was on is also owned by BlackRock. I know it's privately owned by someone. So I don't, it, it could be true just because BlackRock actually owns everything. So if you have a company, if you own something, there's a good percent that BlackRock owns 5%. So it's kind of a moot point. The most suspicious and interesting stuff so far is the day before the attempted assassination, there was some weird stuff going on on Wall Street with the stock market. There was about 12 million bets against all of Trump's businesses, like his um, social media, the Truth Social. I think he also has, I think he also has shares with Rumble and like a lot of different business he's connected to. Well, apparently BlackRock and some other people bet against about $12 million. When you bet against someone's business on the stock market, it's because you think it's gonna plummet all of a sudden. I think it's called like shorting. You're trying to short the company. So you're like betting against it. Like, I think this company is going to tank. This all very well could be a quink and ink. I don't know anything about the stock market, but it's just kind of weird that you guys all did it the day before you might have thought he was going to be taken out. I don't know, guys. So much keeps coming in. Again, all this is alleged. I guess now this is a political channel. So share it with your friends. Let, let people know. Like it if you liked it. And subscribe if you're not already. And then we can see each other again. And I'll see you in the next one. Boy, 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 boy.